Have you ever wondered what beauty really is? We call it abstract. We call it subjective. But is that all it is? For centuries, poets, philosophers, and dreamers have tried to describe beauty. They compared it to the ocean, the moon, the stars, even the rising sun. But if you look closely, all these metaphors share one silent thread, nature. And here's where things get interesting. Even scientists and physicists, people who usually stay far away from poetry, agree on one thing. For them too, the most beautiful thing in the universe is the one that explains nature with absolute precision. So what's that one theory that scientists call the most beautiful in existence? It's not just a law or a formula. It's something that connects everything from the gentle pull of gravity to the invisible dance of electrons. That theory is the quantum field theory. But wait a second. When you Google quantum field theory, you'll find it's actually built upon three earlier foundations, classical physics, special relativity, and quantum mechanics. Now, that raises a curious question. If quantum field theory is just a blend of all these, then why does it get to wear the crown as the most beautiful theory ever created? It sounds unfair, doesn't it? Like the father did all the hard work and the son took all the credit. To understand this mystery, we have to go back, way back, to the 17th century. Back then, physics had only one name, classical physics. And during that time, it was considered perfect, almost divine. Sir Isaac Newton's laws of motion and gravitation didn't just explain the world, they predicted it. With nothing more than a few equations, people could calculate the height of a building by simply tossing a pebble off its roof. They could predict exactly when and where a cannonball would land. And the most unbelievable part? These same laws helped astronomers discover an invisible planet, Neptune, without ever seeing it through a telescope. Here's how. A French astronomer named Urbain Le Verrier noticed something strange. The planet Uranus wasn't moving quite as it should have, based on Newton's equations. He realized there had to be another, much larger planet tugging at it, unseen. Using pure math, he predicted its position. And when telescopes finally pointed there, they found Neptune, exactly where the numbers said it would be. That was the power of classical physics. A framework so perfect, it seemed capable of explaining everything in nature. Motion, heat, light, sound. Every mystery had an answer. No satellites, no computers, no modern technology, just logic, math, and the human mind. But perfection rarely lasts forever. For two centuries, classical physics wore the crown as the most beautiful theory. Until one day, a single explanation changed everything. A small mistake, hidden inside its elegant equations, shattered its reign in the blink of an eye. What was that mistake? Why did it dethrone a theory once considered flawless? And how did that failure eventually lead humanity to the birth of the quantum world itself? A world where nothing behaves as it should. And yet, everything finally makes sense. When classical physics claimed it could explain everything, people believed it. After all, it had predicted planets, mapped gravity, and even calculated motion with surgical precision. But the real test came from something as ordinary as a glowing light bulb. You see, according to classical physics, when a bulb lights up, it should release an infinite amount of ultraviolet radiation. Yes, infinite. Now, if that were true, we wouldn't even be alive to talk about it. The very air around us would have been poisoned by lethal UV rays long ago. So something was off, terribly off. That contradiction cracked the first hole in classical physics' 
perfect armor. And scientists faced two possibilities. Either their beloved theory was wrong, or it was hiding something far deeper than anyone had realized. Back then, physicists noticed something curious about heated objects, especially bulbs and metal filaments. When the temperature changed, the color of the emitted light also changed. At 1,000 Kelvin, it glowed a deep orange. At 5,000, it turned yellow. And around 10,000, it shimmered blue. This pattern wasn't random. It was a message from nature, and scientists wanted to decode it. They plotted these observations on a graph, and the result looked promising until they tried to explain it mathematically. That's when the Rayleigh genes law appeared. It was elegant, logical, and consistent, just as classical physics always was. Using this equation, scientists could predict where the light's energy would peak at different temperatures. At first, everything made perfect sense. But as they looked at higher frequencies, something horrifying emerged. The graph didn't curve down where it should have. Instead, it shot upward infinitely, straight into the ultraviolet range. This disaster was nicknamed the ultraviolet catastrophe. According to classical physics, the hotter an object got, the more infinite energy it should radiate. That meant even our sun, sitting at around 5,000 Kelvin, should be endlessly pouring out ultraviolet radiation. But the sun doesn't. It has a finite amount of energy, limited, measurable, real. That was the day classical physics failed. The scientific world was shaken. For the first time in centuries, nature had given a result that human logic couldn't explain. And then, out of nowhere, a quiet German physicist stepped forward, Max Planck. No drama, no bold claims, just a small, almost ridiculous assumption. He suggested that maybe, just maybe, energy doesn't flow continuously. Instead, it travels in tiny, separate packets, like frames in a movie reel. Each packet, or quantum, carries a fixed, indivisible amount of energy. And the size of that packet? A constant so small it barely exists. 6.6 .6 times 10 to the negative 34th joules. That number became known as the Planck constant. When Planck inserted that value into the Rayleigh genes equation, something miraculous happened. The broken graph suddenly aligned perfectly with real-world observations. Nature and mathematics finally agreed again. In that moment, classical physics regained its crown, but only for a brief, fleeting moment. Because as we soon learned, what goes up must come down. Soon after, another mystery appeared. According to classical physics, any charged particle in motion, like an electron, should continuously radiate energy. If that were true, electrons would quickly spiral into their nuclei, destroying the atom itself. And if atoms collapse, so does everything else. Every molecule, every structure, every form of matter, gone. But that's not what happens. Atoms are stable. The universe stands firm. So clearly, something deeper was at play, something far beyond the reach of Newton's equations. Planck's discovery lit a spark, and other scientists began to see the universe through a new lens. What if the answers we seek don't lie in the large, visible world, but in the microscopic one? That single thought changed everything. For the first time, humanity looked beyond the visible, into the hidden rhythm of reality itself. This marked the birth of an entirely new branch of science, quantum mechanics, a realm where energy comes in bursts, particles behave like waves, and the universe dances to a pattern that's both chaotic and perfectly precise. The age of certainty was over, and the age of quantum mystery had begun. 
when scientists first discovered that electrons orbit the nucleus only at specific energy levels, it completely reshaped our understanding of the universe. What followed was one of the greatest revolutions in science. Einstein, Heisenberg, Schrodinger, and de Broglie each dove into this new mystery. And together, they built what we now call quantum mechanics often described as the most elegant theory of the 20th century. Quantum mechanics began to explain not just atoms, but the invisible world beneath them. Subatomic particles, probability waves, and even ideas that stretch into multiple universes. But in its beauty, the theory also created confusion. One controversial idea was that future events could influence the past. Imagine sending a text message and receiving a reply before you even hit send. Impossible, right? Yet, this was the kind of paradox quantum mechanics hinted at. Here's where quantum entanglement enters. When two particles are created from the same source, they stay connected, no matter how far apart they drift. If particle A spins clockwise, particle B will instantly spin counterclockwise. Instantly meaning faster than light could ever travel. But this idea clashed with Einstein's theory of special relativity, which clearly states, nothing can transfer information faster than the speed of light. To fix this contradiction, quantum physicists introduced a new concept, retrocausality. They proposed that when we observe particle A, Information travels backward in time to the moment both particles were first entangled. At that instant, particle B decides what its spin should be, essentially the future shaping the past. If that were true, the future version of you could walk back through time and whisper, hey, don't become an accountant, start a YouTube channel instead. Of course, that's a joke, but the concept itself Dead serious? Still, quantum mechanics couldn't explain everything. Take beta decay. When a neutron inside an atom transforms into a proton while releasing an electron and an antineutrino, this process happens faster than the speed of light should allow. Even the creation of those particles seems to occur instantaneously. This gap, the things quantum mechanics couldn't explain, led to the birth of a deeper, more unified model, quantum field theory. According to this theory, every particle is not a standalone object, but a ripple in a universal field. Each fundamental particle, quarks, electrons, neutrinos, has its own invisible field spread across the entire universe. Imagine these fields stacked over one another like countless invisible ocean layers moving through the same space. Let's visualize this through hydrogen, the simplest atom. Its proton is made up of two up quarks and one down quark. In quantum field theory, this means two peaks in the up quark field and one peak in the down quark field. An electron, represented by its own field, orbits around it as another ripple. Together, these interacting waves form what we perceive as a hydrogen atom. Now beta decay finally makes sense. Energy doesn't appear or vanish. It simply transfers between these fields. A down quark's field passes energy into an up quark's field. That energy then moves through the W boson field, a force carrying field, and finally ripples into the electron and neutrino fields. Everything connects through these invisible waves. That's why the electron inside your body is fundamentally identical to the one inside a distant star. Both are born from the same universal field, one fabric, infinite expressions. And that's why many physicists call quantum field theory the most beautiful theory ever conceived. As for quantum entanglement, the mystery remains. Research continues. And while we don't yet have all the answers, one thing is clear. This theory doesn't break itself the way retrocausality once did. If you'd like to see how entanglement is being used today, 
like how Google's researchers simulated a tiny wormhole using quantum principles. Check out the video linked here. And if this journey taught you something new, give it a like. Subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon, and stay curious. Because in the quantum world, every observation changes reality, even yours.